Inside our business logic layer, we've got our various classes that go and get us, for example, get us all of the categories. We then have our products item, which has a bit more code in it this time. Yes, it gets the products, gets the products by category, gets the products by product ID, then it has our update statement. So here's an example of an update statement. An update statement will allow you to provide all of the new values and effectively what is what would be your normal primary key. And we've typed these in. We have then marked the method as being an update method and the default update method. Then what you'll typically do is you'll go and get the current product ID that you are updating. So we're going to grab the current ID from the adapter. That gives us a data table, but the expectation is there should only be one row in that table. So we check to see that there is one row. If there is one row, we grab the first row. That becomes our products row. From now on, it's literally a case of going through each item in the list and going and actually modifying the various different properties of this particular item. So the name, the ID, and so on. In this case, we're specifying the product name, we're specifying the supplier ID, category ID, quantity, and so forth. However, some of these are nullable on the database. If something's nullable, the idea is you'll allow them to leave it as null by making your data type nullable when it's actually passed in. To check if something's nullable or is null, you check to see, true or false, has this parameter been given a value? If it has, then we simply take the value and we update the supplier ID. If it isn't, the system auto generates you methods on each row called set column null, set category ID null, set supplier ID null. So that's how we make sure that it's set to a null value. Once we're happy, we then call the update method on the data adapter with the row, and we get back the results. If the results equal one, everything worked. If the results don't, then we return a false to return a boolean of false. So this is one way of doing an update. There are quite a few, but in the time that we've got, we'll just look at this one. We then have insert methods, which is virtually the same type of code. These are all the new values that we want to insert into this table, and essentially we ask for a new row from the products data table object. We ask for a new row, and then we go and set and assign all of the rows. We then call the update method, passing in the new row, which of course does an insert in the underlying database. We also have a method that's called getProducts, and then takes in the sort columns. This is the one that's basically going to pass up the information directly to the end underlying special method that we created. We also want people to be able to find out the count of the number of records, so we're going to just pass back the count from here.